Welcome to the Centre for Anesthesia student podcast series. In this podcast, we will be discussing mechanisms of acute pain. Pain is a vital function of the nervous system. It provides the body with a warning of potential or actual injury. It is both a sensory and emotional experience and is affected by psychological factors, including patients' past experiences, beliefs about pain and fear or anxiety. After listening to this podcast, you should be able to describe pain transmission from the peripheral nociceptors to the central nervous system, understand some of the ways pain is modulated at different stages along the pain pathway, and finally, describe different types of pain, including visceral and neuropathic pain. For more information on this topic, you can see the article, An Introduction to Pain Mechanisms and Pathways, on the Centre for Anesthesia website. We will begin by discussing nociceptors. Nociceptors are specialised sensory receptors responsible for the detection of noxious or unpleasant stimuli. They are distributed throughout the body, for example in the skin, viscera, muscles, joints and meninges. They can be stimulated by mechanical, thermal or chemical stimuli. They transform the stimuli into electrical signals which are then conducted to the central nervous system. Nociceptors are the free nerve endings of primary afferent A delta and C fibres. Inflammatory mediators, such as bradykinin, prostaglandins and cytokines, are released from damaged tissue and can stimulate and sensitise nociceptors. A beta fibres are another type of primary afferent fibre. They transmit non-noxious stimuli, like soft touch. A-beta, A-delta and C-fibres have different characteristics that allow the transmission of different types of sensory information. For example, A-beta fibres are highly myelinated and large in diameter, and therefore conduct signals rapidly. A-delta fibres are lightly myelinated and smaller diameter, and so conduct more slowly than A-beta fibres. They respond to mechanical and thermal stimuli. They carry rapid, sharp pain and are responsible for the initial reflex response to acute pain. C-fibres are unmyelinated. They are also the smallest type of primary afferent fibre, and therefore they demonstrate the slowest conduction. C-fibres are polymodal, responding to chemical, mechanical and thermal stimuli. Activation of C fibres leads to slow burning pain. A delta and C fibres synapse with secondary afferent neurons in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. They release excitatory neurotransmitters such as glutamate and substance P. Pain signals are transmitted via ascending tracts in the spinal cord to higher centres. There are two main tracts the spinothalamic tract and the spinoreticular tract. The secondary afferent neurons of the spinothalamic tract decussate within a few segments of the level of entry into the spinal cord. They ascend in the contralateral spinal cord to synapse with third-order neurons in the thalamus. The third-order neurons then ascend to terminate in the somatosensory cortex. The spinothalamic tract transmits signals that are important for pain localization. Second-order neurons of the spinoreticular tract also decussate and ascend in the contralateral cord. They synapse in the brainstem reticular formation before projecting to the thalamus and hypothalamus. There are many further projections to the cortex. This pathway is involved in the emotional aspects of pain. Diagrams showing these pathways can be found on the Centre for Anesthesia website. Pain processing occurs in the brain. The somatosensory cortex is important for the localization of pain. However, we know from imaging techniques such as functional MRI that multiple brain regions are activated during the acute pain experience. This is often called the pain matrix. We will now discuss some of the mechanisms that act to inhibit pain transmission at the spinal cord level and via descending inhibition from higher centers. In 1965, Melzack and Wall proposed the gate control theory of pain. 
It describes inhibitory pain modulation at the spinal cord level and helps to explain why when we bang our head, it feels better if we rub it. By rubbing our head, we activate non-nociceptive A-beta fibres. This leads to activation of inhibitory interneurons in the dorsal horn that inhibit the transmission of pain signals by C-fibres. Glycine and gamma-aminobutyric acid, or GABA, are important neurotransmitters that act at inhibitory interneurons. Descending inhibition also arises from the periaqueductal grey matter in the midbrain and the rostral ventromedial medulla. Both these centres contain high concentrations of opioid receptors and endogenous opioids, which helps explain why opioids are analgesic. Descending pathways project to the dorsal horn and inhibit pain transmission. These pathways use noradrenaline and serotonin as neurotransmitters. Finally, we will discuss visceral and neuropathic pain. Visceral pain is pain arising from the internal organs. It is typically diffuse and poorly localised and often described as deep, dull or dragging. It can be associated with autonomic changes such as nausea and vomiting or changes in heart rate and blood pressure. It can also evoke strong emotional responses. In contrast to somatic pain, which is felt due to stimuli such as burning or crushing, visceral pain is triggered by smooth muscle distension or contraction, or stretching of the capsule surrounding an organ, ischemia, necrosis or irritation by chemicals produced during inflammation. Referred pain is pain experienced at a site distant from the source of pain. It is due to different afferents converging on the same dorsal horn neurons in the spinal cord. For example, shoulder pain can be felt due to the diaphragmatic irritation that occurs after laparoscopic surgery that can stretch the diaphragm. Neuropathic pain is caused by damage to nerves in the central or peripheral nervous system. Damage can be due to mechanisms including trauma or surgery, diabetes, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, ischemia, infection or malignancy. Neuropathic pain has some different characteristics to nociceptive pain. It is more likely to be spontaneous and is described as burning or like an electric shock. Pain may be experienced in response to a stimulus that does not usually cause pain. This is known as allodynia or there may be a heightened response to a stimulus that is usually painful. This is known as hyperalgesia. To summarise, pain is both a sensory and emotional experience. Pain transmission is a result of complex peripheral and central processes. These processes can be modulated at different levels, and pain perception is a result of the balance between facilitatory and inhibitory interactions. Thanks for downloading and listening to our podcast. If you have any questions about what you've heard, then please email us at centre.4.anesthesia.ucl at googlemail.com. You can also email us if you'd like to suggest a topic for a future podcast. Please check our website at www.ucl.ac.uk slash anesthesia.